Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make a fun mixed media canvas using a lot of supplies you probably already have and the best birds set from Stampin' Up. And if you're interested in this set or any of the other new sets from Stampin' Up, check out the video description and I'll have a link to my friend Wendy's page. She has a beautiful website with lots of inspirational ideas and uh, you can order directly through her. And I'll also put a link to her YouTube channel in case you want some more fun stamping ideas. The first thing I'm doing is inking up the uh, branch stamp with some archival ink. And I'm gonna stamp that twice on my little canvas panel. And the panel I'm working on is a paper coated Art Bites panel from Jerry's Artorama. They're really great for multimedia work. They're not um, primed like a traditional panel, so they, um, they're not as slick and they'll take water media and ink really well. This stamp set also comes with two birds. They kind of remind me of male and female goldfinches and they're facing each other, which makes it really great to put them together in a scene and having them interact with each other. So I decided to put the, um, the uh, smaller bird on top and the larger bird on the bottom. Again, I'm still using the archival ink because I know that um, that is not gonna smear when I go to paint on top of them. This kit also comes with little berries and flowers that you can add to the branch. And I really like this because I stamped the same branch two times and I really want them to look like different branches, maybe coming off from the same tree or maybe two trees next to each other. So I decided to put these little berries on the top branch and then fill in the bottom branch with flowers. This is also really great to do if your um, ink skips at all or isn't as dark as you like. You can totally build the scene this way and make every time you use a set, make it look a little different different. We're going to color our images with paint. And the first thing we're going to do is actually build a frame and I'll be showing you a really fun kind of crackly peeled paint technique a little bit later on, but we need to get a base coat down. So I'm just using some uh, hot chocolate covered pa colored paint and it was like 25 cents at AC Moore on sale. I mean, not an expensive paint to just roughly paint a frame around our scene. What I want to do is get rid of the ends of the branches. I want the illusion that these branches are kind of coming off of a tree. And after you've filled that out, you can, after you've made that border, you can actually fill in the background with some light blue paint. I think a project like this would be extremely fun to do with newer painters or crafters or even children. You could stamp out a bunch of things, lay them out on the table with some little paper plates with some paint on them and let the kids paint. I think it would be super duper fun. And don't worry if you go over any, any lines because we can always re-stamp on top and give this piece of artwork a little bit of like an offset printing look, which I think is really fun. And it's something we're gonna do a little bit later. Oh, if you're also wondering what else I got from the brand new Stampin' Up! catalog, you can wait till the end of the video. I will do a little haul of all the new stamp sets that I got. And you can let me know what you'd like me to see uh, next. So uh, make sure you stick around for that if you like haul videos. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is actually paint our birds. And I thought yellow is cheerful and would be really fun on this piece. I used some of the brown that I'd used in the frame to add some shadows on the birds. And again, don't worry about covering up any of the details because we can over stamp in a little bit. It's totally not a problem. You can also see that I painted the leaves in there a light green. There's really not a lot of skill involved in here. I'm pretty much just blocking in colors. I did go to my artist acrylics to get a little bit of um, red to do my berries and flowers. And then I just mixed them with a little bit of cream that I'll be using later on to make some lighter areas. After the ink was all dry, I inked up my stamps again in archival ink and stamped the birds right on top of the birds that I painted. Now you might want to use a stamp -a jig for this to make sure you get your placement perfect. I just kind of eyeballed it and I kind of liked how it wasn't perfect and it really looked like an old fashioned lithograph. The next supply we're gonna use is a little unusual and it comes from the bathroom. We're gonna use a little Vaseline or petroleum jelly to create a crackly resist on the side of our frame. To do this, you're simply going to need a coarse brush, such as a hog bristle brush that you would use for oil painting or one of those coarse plastic bristle glue brushes. Simply dip the brush in the Vaseline and drag it across the frame, being sure to lift up on your strokes as you get to the end so you don't have any harsh start and stop lines when you go to apply the paint on top. Then you want to apply a contrasting color of paint and I'm using a mixture of cream with some of that really soft green that I use to paint the leaves with. It's very important that you use a soft wide brush and you only do one stroke of paint across the Vaseline. Then we're going to let that dry and once it's dry we'll be able to rub off the um, areas that have the Vaseline. But while I have my paint out I decided I'm going to take a little bit of that cream and a round brush and add some highlights to my birds and to the berries that are on the branch. 
I also decided to grab some darker sap green paint and add a little bit of shading to my leaves just to give them a little more punch. Now you don't have to be a painter to do this. It's so easy. Just play, have fun with colors and design and really see how versatile those rubber stamps can be. Once everything has dried, grab a clean paper towel and wipe off the, um, the border. So you're basically just rubbing over the dried border and any place you see brown, that's where we had Vaseline underneath and it's letting the uh, paint come off. It's a great way to get kind of a chipped and crackled paint effect without buying any fancy crackle medium. We pretty much have this in our, um, in our medicine cabinets anyway, so why not put it to use in the art room? Speaking of unusual materials, I went out back and was kind of walking around my woods and I found some um, branches that had been um, fallen off of a tree. They were just dead on the ground. So I decided to snap off some six inch pieces and add them to my artwork as a frame. I'm using hot glue to stick them down since hot glue is a thick glue that will marry uneven objects together. The last thing I'm going to do to this project is to make a hanging ribbon. And I thought this little scrap of burlap would be perfect for that. That way I can hang it on my wall or I can set it up on my mantle. It's just gonna add a nice texture and um, also make it more useful for displaying. And I'll just glue it to the back of the canvas just like that. If you wanna know where I found any of the products that I used today, check out the links in the video description. A lot of these things you can find right around your house, which is wonderful. And if you wanna see the other wonderful things I got from the brand new Stampin' Up! catalog, stick around because I'm gonna do a haul video right after this right here on the same video so just sit tight and you can see that and if you're interested in any of the products that I used you can check out my sponsor Wendy Cranford she is a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'll have a link to her shop as well so let's go on to the haul um, so I want to show you some of the things that I got I'm always excited when the new book comes out because I find with Stampin' Up! stuff I tend to it doesn't collect dust it gets used a lot even my older sets that are like from the 90s still are relevant and beautiful and I like um, companies that release products that don't go out of style. I'm going to start by um, uh, showing you, this is what we're going to use today. This is one I'm most excited to start using and it's called Best Birds and it is one of the clear stamp sets. So they do offer red rubber and clear. Um, I prefer the unmounted one just for because of storage issues. You can still get wood mounted stamps but um, I'm at the point now where I'm at like, you know, maximum saturation in the craft room. So this is the one we're going to use today. I love that it's got a background texture, sentiments, and adorable birds. Um, I also got this a playful background set because I saw these kind of like overstamped and they looked really nice. And I like to make my own backgrounds. I like to add pattern and texture to things. So I thought that was a great, um, great stamp set for that. Uh, this one, I don't think this is one of the new, it was in the new catalog, but I don't think it's, I think it's been around a bit. I just like the collage element. I like to build my own collages. This is also a red rubber set so you have like the option of stamping into hot embossing powder and different things like that which is really nice. Um, they've come out with quite a few layering stamp sets I've noticed and I saw this cupcake one and I thought it was really beautiful and would be a great way to do a quick gift tag or a uh, birthday card so um, so I grabbed that. Also um, this is one of their new layering stamp sets and they've got starfish which I didn't have any starfish stamps and I have quite a nautical stamp collection so I thought I needed a, I needed a big starfish. Also hummingbirds, leaves, and roses which um, and a few sentiments which I thought was a really nice kind of collection if you were, wanted to kind of try out some layering stamps but you didn't know what to get. You can see there's two sheets in there. They're pretty good sized stamps too. Um, um, like the bird is probably like I'd say three inches tall so that's pretty good. Um, don't be a great way just to kind of get your feet wet with the layering stamps to see if you want to invest in any um, any bigger sets, uh, sets because there are companies out there that just do nothing but layering sets. Um, I really liked the <laughs> this uh, birthday fiesta set. Um, I thought it'd be really fun. I still do a lot of kids birthday cards and I thought this would be good especially since my kids are now in you know they're almost well one of them is a teenager and the other two are almost teenagers so it's kind of a little bit it's, it's still playful but it's a little bit more sophisticated than you know the cutesy um kid sets that I have and you can layer the banners up and I, I just really I, I like uh, I like versatile stuff like that and then I also like this kind of like drive-in looking um, set that would be really good for birthday cards and whatnot or even like um <clears throat> like party favors like if you did like a popcorn box or something and stamp that on there if you were doing like a drive-in birthday party or something I thought it would be really funny um, and that one's called marquee messages and that is a clear stamp and you can see how big the stamps are that's that's probably four and a half inches four inches anyway um, hi so I thought that was that was 
pretty nice. I got a bottle of um, this. I, I like this pool party color. I thought that was nice. Um, I still have all the older pads that aren't the squishy foam. They're like the felt ones. And so um, if a color gets discontinued, I just try to get something kind of close and then I'll just revamp one of my older pads. I know it's probably not like, you know, completely kosher to do that. I mean, it's fine. It's just, you know, it's not going to match any other ink or marker perfectly, but I'm okay with that. Uh, and I thought this was really pretty wherever you go because you can layer up like the bridge and the sun rays and I like the compass um and I just thought it was just kind of unique I didn't have anything like that so I grabbed that again for the nautical collection I actually had my eyes on this last year but I didn't um I didn't get it and so I decided I would grab that uh this year because I just I love the nautical themed things I don't it doesn't seem to be it's very trendy now but I don't think it's going to be something that goes out of style it always comes back um especially you know live in Maine you're on the coast it's you know it's very appropriate I sell my um my cards in a booth in uh, the next town over in an antique mall so having nautical designs there is really um it really good sellers. This is a new one. I thought this was really pretty. I love the little easel. I love the little sentiments here and I thought it was just very playful and um, it'd be fun to do as a little favor for like students um, in my art classes and stuff or maybe even a, a set for them to use and that's one of the red rubber sets. And okay this is a little indulgent. I have a thing for mason jars. I have way too many mason jars. I just cannot resist them. And I loved this set. I thought it was really sweet. This one, I think, has a framelits die available for it. But I didn't get that because I do have a, um, a skin and cut machine. So if I want to cut it out, I'll just use that. But it's got some layering, little easy layering, like two-step stampin' flowers and some sentiments. And this is really a lot in this set. And I thought this would be, you know, that perfect set to throw in your stamp bag to go stamp at a friend's house. And it would just be very versatile. And then another layering set they have the, are these feathers, and I'm not sure if they're new this year or if they were in the catalog last year, but I just thought they were really elegant. Feathers are also still very, very hot and trendy, and um, and just a beautiful motif. I thought I might do like a dream catcher or something with those. I'm not sure. It'd be definitely a fun way to do some mixed media, I think, with those. And then for the hostess gifts, because I did enough that I had my own like little my own private party, so I got some hostess benefits. Because um, that's what you can do, you know, if you're gonna order a significant amount you're probably best not to use the host code for the free card kit but actually put it in as a as a um as a your own party and then you get your hostess benefits and if you have any questions on that you can simply email my friend wendy and she will help you and she'll let you know what to do so that you get the most bang for your buck which is important um and then, so for my host ones, I got this one called Fabulous Flora, and what I'm probably going to do is use watercolor crayons or the Prima watercolor oil pastels and color on the rubber, stamp it, and then drag the color around with a wet brush. I think this will be the quickest way for some beautiful tags or thank you notes. Just really fun and quick. I'm really excited to use that. That's a host only one, so you do have to have a party to get that one. I thought this was really just fun. Um, I love the little light bulb that hangs down says love. Um, and I like the camera. I do have quite a few old cameras. I like the old cameras. And I just thought it was just really fun and again, you know, quick and easy card fodder. And then this is a, a two-step stamping type um, stamp where you've got your outline, which you would do probably in a dark color, then you could stamp your color, your flowers in whatever color, and your buds in green. And it's got some really nice sentiments. Um, you know, thank you. Uh, you, have, uh, you have a gift for making others feel loved. Your heart and my heart are very old friends. I miss you. That's all. Thank you for you. Love you. I just thought those were really useful. Um, and that's kind of what I go for with the Stampin' Up! ones. They tend not to, to go out of style as easily, so I go for really useful sets. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to order any of the products that I showed you today, you can check out Love and Stampin' and independent stamping demonstrator Wendy Cranford. She's my friend. She's got a great little business going there, and you can order any of the things that I showed you today, and she's awfully nice as well. Links are in the video description, including a current host code, so you can get a free card kit with your order of $15 or more. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.